Welcome back, everybody. This is NECC Esports. My name is Infernosis. I'm joined here by Stacked. How are you doing today? Doing pretty well. It's uh, very happy to be here commentating another what I expect to be great game of Overwatch. And how are you doing today, Infernosis? Well, I did just get to watch a very fun game in the match before. Got to cast with a new person, and I always love to to expand my casting horizons and cast with new individuals. So, but it's always nice to go back to somebody I have casted with before, like you, Stack. So I'm looking forward to another, like a like you said, great matchup here between UC Davis and UC. Oh yeah. No, well, most definitely. You know, it's. Uh, I think we could draw on like just some statistics here did some cursory research on the teams here you know uh uc davis you know we see the lineup that i expected from the one we one vod that i actually reviewed and yeah we have ecal umbla lumba i like that name by the way <laughs> very cool name very Frosty. hard to ask for I've before so oh, yeah. <laughs> it's hard to keep up with that one but and i think you know we're i didn't see much uh in the week one vod of difference in roles so i think everyone's kind of locked into their roles we're not going to see that kind of flexibility that we've seen from like other players or other teams which is i like the consistency so we know what to expect uh but you see davis against santa cruz santa cruz seems to be a titan right now within this uh within this bracket so uh, i really do want to see how uc davis is going to contend with a you know santa cruz because as far as i'm aware they actually have already beaten uh, one incredible other team in the league, uh, Midland Varsity, who happened to be the champions last season. So to you know be able to go up and toe to toe and win against such a contender uh, is actually you know something to be reckoned with and definitely something to make note of. So hey, this is going to be a challenging match, definitely. And you know we're gonna hopefully jump into it here, Lee Jang Tower, the first we're gonna go into. And I guess, what do you expect to see here? Do you, having casted this team before, what do you expect? Since my, my experience casting is only for the UV Davis one squad, uh, I'm going to say two players to keep a, a watchful eye on is going to be Juicy Snake and Ecal. They have had a phenomenal presence, and every time I've watched, Ecal's a phenomenal all around. I mean, we've seen a lot of, of wide variety of play from them. I've seen a lot of Winstons overall from the UC Davis side. They really do like that Winston strat. I don't know if you saw that before. You said you did a little bit of odd review, but Winston was a pretty heavy choice for them, and so was so was Hammond, the wrecking ball decision. And that's something that yeah, you're going to see from, from most squads, right? I mean, I know when we last cast it together, it was it was Hammond every single game. And we also oh, saw yeah, Winston yeah, yeah, every yeah, single definitely. game. And, yeah, yeah, Freaky J, yeah, shout <laughs> Huge, huge plays for all of that all around. But another thing you've got to keep, <laughs> A big watch for Lions for are Echoes, and I don't remember entirely if UC Davis was like a huge Echo team individually, but Echo, if you're going to bring a Winston, if you have an Echo in involved, that duplicate, bringing two Winstons out, you don't think of Winston as this high DPS output kind of hero. That that Tesla cannon, uh, as I have accidentally flubbed before and said Monkey Zap Gun, but that Tesla cannon there. I like Monkey Zap Gun. Yeah. <laughs> that That's Tesla cannon can be a very, a very strong presence inside when you have two of them taking out your opposition, right? I mean, it's something you got to keep an eye out for. So I think if we do see an Echo, keep an eye out for the double Winston to come through as well. Okay, definitely. But I know that, you know, I did also see the classic Brawl, the Ryan Zarya, so... You see, Davis definitely a team that has that flexibility. They've got a pretty diverse hero pool, so they definitely play the situation. You know, we're not going to see what we've seen in other teams where you kind of lock into a preferred comp and you just try to force it, whether or not it's necessarily what you want in the situation. And I think, you know, that level of play and level of individual execution is something that you'll definitely expect to see at this level. You know, people have the diversity in the hero pools to be able to you know, answer the situation, what's at hand. And, you know, I think you need that flexibility, especially for uh, Lee Jang. I, what do you think? Are we going to see those kind of uh, funny Symmetra teleport onto point strats here? We better. We, we talked, I talked about this last time with Nuclear on, on the map before, because we got to see this as well. That, that, that's Symmetra. I called it out. I said, I want to see Symmetra, because, you know, everyone okay. here who's, who's casted or uh, in Control Black, Center, so let's go. Cast. Evan who's watched knows Yelkerp, he's one of the casters here. He uh he had a clip mm -hmm. on his Twitter where quite literally he went in as a Reinhardt and did he did the Symmetra teleport, both sides did, and he got a full Reinhardt shatter in about seven seconds. And wow. 
insanely Insane. quick. I mean, fully charged <laughs> it, and he dropped it immediately, completely decimated the opposition. And it's it's plays like that that you look at and go, oh my god, I want to see this. I want to see this in action. I want to cast for that. I want to be involved in that in any way. So I want to see some extra teleports. Now we're more than likely not going to see one on this on this exact round, right? But I definitely think we well need actually a good there we it. there we do see really? it actually. Okay, I, I cross my words. I take it back. We are going to see that one come through. I've We're never seeing actually an exact seen a mirror match right now, actually. Ooh, Very I interesting. Like the junk rat choice. I like the Junkrat choice, especially when you're facing off against Reinhardt's that come through. Huge decimation for shields. But it's going to be hard to not take that explosive damage onto the Zarya bubbles. Five, oh, and we can already tell this is going to be a quick rushdown. These teams are going to meet in no time at all. Teleporters go out for spawn. You know, they're closing the distance even quicker here. And Huge already... Push. Huge push that comes through. It's gonna be. It's gonna be Oompa Loompa. It's gonna take his squad to the back line. They've already lost the high ground position. It's gonna be a fight that's gonna engage pretty swiftly. And Zarya over on one side has already got a pretty darn large charge. That's Enigma who's now behind the back line. But EMF will connect with one and two onto Ekel and Juicy Snake, and it's gonna be a full rerun and reback as they're going to have to situate themselves in a bit of a safer position. And I do like the rotation on to point, controlling the space uh, from EMF, basically. Also, the fire strike so incredibly well placed, taking out Ekel and just, you know, opening up the a way to attack and just control the point. And now they're firmly set up all the way to the choke here. Both ant matrices go out and another fire strike onto Ekel. The repetition here. The rest of the picks come through. Ionic. Putting the damage down range and the symmetric turret as well, just getting a cheeky kill there. I mean, you have those so situated at this point in that chokehold right there. They're gonna have to think about moving in a different direction. Take that higher ground. Take. We see where Enigma is kind of running over. You do see the the UC Davis side is kind of switching over, and you're gonna see the Santa Cruz side have to make that rotation as well to hold that. But they're not gonna be as situated. Rip tire will come out here from Ionic. Will it connect? It in fact will, and it will connect onto Wild and to the Immortality Field. And you like the quick adaptation uh, from Ionic, avoiding the immortality field and chasing down Wild, who was just out of range. Uh, really good quick adaptation there, which is what you would expect. And once again, kind of repeating back to square one, trying to push from a different angle here, but they're going to have to regroup. So much to contend with here. Oh. All the shatter goes down. Oh, it doesn't connect, but the, the, the charge from behind, you can see EMF take the backside of Oompa Loompa, and it's going to be Superman to find the last two with Ionic finishing off Finrear. It's not a team wipe. You do have you do have Frosty sitting inside his spawn, just spamming those junk right utilities, and actually connecting under quite a few of them, but not enough to kill, and it's it, it's a hard-fought battle right now for UC Davis. They are struggling to stay alive in these junk points. That's the thing about this map, too, is that once one team has firmly established themselves, once again, you see all the damage going in, but the teleporter behind the team and the barrier coming in to split the fight. This is the opening that they need. You see Davis now with a chance to flip point and actually establish themselves within control center here. A very cheeky teleport behind the line on the desk, but it's going to be going to drop the beat now. It's going to come from the Santa Cruz side, and it's also going to come from the UC Davis side. They're going to full send it back, and it's going to have to be a regroup. Oh, a shatter comes through, and it hits hard! But the Immortality Field is going to keep their own tank alive. Graviton Surge does connect as well. Juicy Snake's denying the shield from EMF, and it's going to be a lot of damage. That Symmetra is going to rip and shred the opposition of EMF, and it's going to be a hard battle now with that frontliner gone, and Ecal is just going to make it even worse. The hemorrhaging now from the Santa Cruz side. This is a really incredible. I like that they kept the pressure up even after the grab. Still focusing fire. Actually, both Ekel and Juicy Stick focusing both of their beams down. So I like the focus fire there. Not giving up after they saw that the grab wasn't, you know, fully kind of taken advantage of. But still, now that they're set up on the point here, hopefully they can hold. Already taking up near to what, you know, Santa Cruz had. Once again, Ant Matrix or Ant Matrix, but the picks go in favor of Davis here. Frosty's gonna get taken out by a rip tire from Ionic. The junk on junk rat violence. We saw the Ant Matrix on Ant Matrix. Now we're gonna see the junk on junk rat. It's gonna be a teleporter that comes out to bring, you know, the, the Santa Cruz side back even swifter into the opposition. And they're they're gonna need it. It's at 71% right now. They're, they're, our own is about 90, but the Graviton does come here. That's Enigmas. It's gonna catch two, but there is going to be any mortality field that will save the life of the opposition. And Ecal will find EMF. And once that shield's gone, there Ooh. goes the Shatter from Umbalumba. He comes in swinging an Ecal and Juice. 
Lucy Steak will clean up the last man standing really in this fight from this backside getting pushed by Lucio is Moises, but it's going to be kind of Juicy Steak on the opposite side cleaning up in their own spawn, and it's looking like a 91% is going to be hard for them to try and fight in this last engagement. And it is interesting. Ionic taking that incredibly long flank, but Juicy Steak gets the pick. Now they're going into the last fight down one, having to make the switch on to Ball to even contest here, and really, Oomba Loomba taking point. Pressing W into EMF here. Symmetra Wall does go down, and the Graviton will connect. The Shatter from behind will decimate! Oh my goodness! You see Davis coming through, and that's Ecal with four on the board in that one fight. Now five on the board at one time. They're going to use the Ant Matrix wow. and everything. Just, just <laughs> balling it out here in round one. I think we just saw the play of the game there, unless someone can really just upstage that ending play there. Uh, incredible by Ecal. Uh, I think some things to touch up on is we saw really one defining fight in which, you know, UC Davis uh, kept control and showed that they were definitely a contender up against uh, Santa Cruz. I saw EMF want to take a pin. Uh, once the grab was initiated from Enigma, EMF went for the Rhine charge, but unfortunately didn't get anyone and then was, you know, duly punished. And I like that follow up by Davis to just, you know, not let that go unpunished and firmly establish themselves. Uh, on the point and never back down so uh, really good especially because it was such a hard fought battle to even push past their choke you see how long they were held at their choke trying different strategies to get in there and once again the cheeky symmetra teleported strats on the point we see that just the quick take ionic already with a quick pick on the juicy stake here so giving themselves the advantage even if they're not established on the point yet they are up one here Santa Cruz going to using the Immortality Field. It's going to be removed by the opposition. You know, it, time has been bought. The last one would kind of regroup after you lose the one. But there's the Shatter. That's a quick one. Oompa Loompa connects, drops, and completely sweeps. But the issue is he overbounded, and his backline gets caught out in the opposition. And it's going to go to Santa Cruz because they left the backline open when, he, when, when we see, you know, Oompa Loompa get too aggressive on that charge. The Shatter connects. It takes down two or three in the backline. The charge connects. But you've left the enemy DPS, which you did not connect with to completely wipe your back line and also generating an ant matrix before the point was even unlocked what what a quick alt generation there uh, truly some of the players here are just playing out of their minds and really all of the players are playing so cohesively as a team really i think this could swing either way still both have shown that they're incredibly effective at following up on these different plays and i like the use of the teleporter still you know they're playing the objective, not playing the fights, and still, you know, they've been caught out of position. It might be a quick retake here, but still, that's a, some valuable percentage that is going towards the Davis side. Not only is it a valuable percentage, but you baited out a Reinhardt Shatter. You baited the Shatter, and now at the ending of this fight, Ionic's going to go ahead and use the High Noon to clean up on Wild. Ekal attempting to jump off does not make it off. That's valuable 17% and a lot of ults that were used. And while there is still four ults available for the Santa Cruz side, you know, you can charge yours up as well. You have a High Noon. You have that, that Matrix available as well. You're pretty close for both Ekal, Oompa Loompas, and Wild's ult. So you can, you can get yourself back into the situation and have an engaging ult as well. And I like the just quick blizzard on a point to stop the teleporter strat once again in its tracks. So I like that awareness. And yeah, the, even the shatter comes in. Is it going to be enough to sway this? And it does seem like there's a chance here, but no, unfortunately, Frosty gets taken out by Ionic. So you had just this back and forth there. I do think that that quick response to blizzard on a point to stop the Davis teleport strat uh, it was just so incredibly well thought out by Superman, so a really good usage there to shut down that attack. I mean, looking at how fast that came in, the teleporter strategy that we spoke about, it, it just isn't working. It's cheeky and it's fun to watch, but it's not what you're needing, so we're going to see them switch over to the Echo, keeping that variety in the situation. A Shadow will be blocked now by Oompa Loompa, and it's going to be the push that they're going to try and act off of that. Time is running out, however. They're going to need to get onto the objective to actually contest, and it looks like they're going to leave it up to Wild to do so. He's on the back line now, and they're going to step in just for a second to get it. The High Noon will now go out from Ionic. Superman will find the first frag in that fight, but Frosty will fall, not able to get up to their charge and it's looked like santa cruz might be able to just clean up the last fights and they're actually going to use that matrix at the end finish it off and ecal will be the last of now wild will be the last to fall on that one as wild is unfortunately caught out at the end 
And really, I like all the different attempts, these strategies, you know, sticking with the Symmetra a bit too late to really make much of an impact late into the round. But, you know, there was just so much to contend with. The May already established on the point is denying you so much space, and we saw the effectiveness there cutting off Umbla Loomba from the team. Like, the, the Ryan was just completely separated from the team. They saw that opportunity uh, converged upon them, and then that was kind of just the end of that last fight. It definitely is hard to push into a May that's, you know, helping out the team already established onto the point because, you know, unless you have some other area control yourself, uh, they've just got such a solid advantage. Yeah, it's definitely going to be interesting. We do see switching off the Symmetra, that's Superman, last second switching over to Tracer. And we're going to see both the Winston and now a Hammond from Enigma. Oompa Loompa's going to play now. They're switching. e is no longer on the Zarya. It's going to be Oompa Loompa this time. And we're going to see a Zenyatta. That Discord Orb is going to be a very large Thorn, quite literally, in the opposition side. And going to increase the damage output. And it's going to be a Thorn for damage. It's going to be Moises who finds Wild. Frosty would connect onto Enigma. And it's going to be a trade for trade. A tit for tat in the first beginning stages of, of round three. And it is a trade, but, you know, obviously the advantage here is just for Santa Cruz. Already established uh, well onto the point here. And they just controlled all of the space just in the very center of the map. And now kiting around the left side here. Davis is trying to push in through this choke. Ekel is engaging with no more jump here. The jump back is expended. And Ekel still really deep into the fray. Oh, wants to kill himself, but, you know, unfortunately gets taken out. So you're still feeding ult charge there. And really, wow, what a quick just shutdown. I think they might have to change up their strategy here. If they're bottlenecking themselves uh, through that side, you, know, you, you really cut off your own mobility. Uh, you want to go for this kind of a, a dive here. But, you know, the Zarya Winston is not really having as much utility and movement as the Winston ball from you know, Santa Cruz's side here. Oh, a pulse bomb from Superman will go on to Wild. That's an inst instantaneous at the beginning of that push. And we're seeing a completely different round from map from round one. Map, round one pretty handily in the favor of UC Davis. This one's going pretty handily in the favor of Santa Cruz. Round two was a bit of a toss-up, however. I mean, it was it, it was mostly in the favor of Santa Cruz, but it went back and forth on occasional on those fights. You were seeing a lot more kills that UC Davis was getting, but they are severely struggling here. And I think it's the tight hallways that they're lacking. You saw a lot of the engagements that UC Davis would win would be in tight hallways. The minefield now will get dropped from Enigma in the back line, and it will actually kill Wild. This is going to be the second fight in a row that they've lost Wild before the fight has even officially started. Winston Rage comes through, and it's going to be... No, sorry, it's Frosty. He's going to get killed by the, the actual high noon there from Ionic, and Lewis showing once again that healers can get it done too into Juicy Snake, and it's going to be... They need a regroup, but they don't have the time to get the regroup underway. And really, just Wild is going to have to stay alive here. You got the rally, and hopefully they can push in with that. But they're going to need to pop it soon. Ekel's having to contest on the point to engage this overtime. But already Ionic takes Frosty down, so already you're down one. The Primal Rage is bullying Wild and Juicy Stake at the bridge, but they're going to make it quickly on the point, hopefully, here. But really, yeah, pick for pick here. The Trance is going to kind of undo the effectiveness of the grab here, but can Umbla Loomba, yes, takes out one. Can you contend with the other? No, Ionic takes the pick and another onto Juicy Steak here. Frosty doing everything they can to avoid these shots and no, goes down. Ionic with the 3k there at the end. Wow, incredibly well-placed shots, but also the utility, the heals with the you know, Harmony Orb and the Orb of Discord too. Also, you know, that Zenyatta gives you so much utility in these fights. Yeah, but this yeah, is something that this. you touched up on. Yes, we did expect we expected this. Oh my goodness. This this was this was game changing. If you give one moment in this matchup where where UC Davis had their biggest dominant performance right here. Just it just it looks like it looks like they're on something right there. Just mouse swinging wildly, but you wouldn't expect that, you know, during the entire process of that, just full um, near team wipe single-handedly off of your ult and, and the support on that. Just the kill feed entirely. Mad. They're even making, they're asking what the sense is. <laughs> <laughs> they're even commenting on it as well. But, you know, yeah, I mean, I touched on it. Santa Cruz dominating performance in, in round two and three. Phenomenal performance That's in round two and yeah. three. Yeah, and round three was no chance for UC Davis. And I don't think it was because UC Davis fell off or... or 
I, I think it's the open area. They, they tried to play out into a little bit more on their own, but Ionic with the McCurry was denying any chance for Juicy Steak to have any push. You know, the, the Winston bubble was coming too late when the actual jumps with the leaps would come through. So it would you would have Ionic who was able to stun the Winston and they would deal enough damage before he could even put a shield down because they aren't dropping the mm -hmm. shield fast enough. And I think while we know that they're very comfortable in the Winston and they like to bring that out, no protection on the back line and, and the rush that was came and coming through from the, the, the Tracer and from... At one point, it was even the Zenyatta that was getting picks in the back line. You have yeah, no protection definitely. for your healers. And you, you have to kind of adjust that as it progresses. You have to kind of work your way to a different direction. And they tried to switch it up in directions. They tried to go back and forth, but no side was working for them. And unfortunately... They, they couldn't bring it out on that side. But I, I definitely think, as we head over to Hollywood, I believe, is I think that's what we are. I definitely think we're going to see a completely different yes. kind of scenario. This one's also pretty wide open. There's a very few little small choke boards besides maybe the second half of the second actual payload push and the ending payload push. It's the only tight, confined places that you're going to see a, a fight kind of engage in that hallway kind of section. And so I think Santa Cruz is has the advantage in the open airs, but I think UC Davis definitely showed us with tight hallways how how compatible they can be. No, most definitely. And I think, you know, that's the kind of difference there. I think it's the comfort zones that these teams feel when it comes to different compositions and also just maps, you know, the environments they have to play around in. So we saw UC Davis really hit their stride when they're playing the Brawl comp. You know, they're playing the Rhine Zarya. They can play that close Brawl style. And in that, they really shined. It was just an incredibly... A well played composition. They control that map and were able to not only, you know, control that map once they were established on a point, but pushing in past the choke when the opposing force is just, you know, threatening you at the choke with so much area denial. You know, the symmetric turrets, the junk rat just spam. Uh, the fact that they were able to push into that and turn the tides of that battle just speaks to their efficacy on that composition. But then once again, as you'd mentioned, when brawl was no longer viable on the different maps of legion that's really when santa cruz just took over because they had a lot more effectiveness when it came to the dive on gardens and then on a on the night market especially you know when they had the may controlling point and they were just shutting down the just cheeky symmetra plays so they you know had answers to what they saw uc davis was presenting them with and I like that variability, the dynamic play that they had to, you know, just counter the op options uh, that UC Davis had. I like that. So I think we're going to need more variability here from UC Davis. But like you mentioned, first point can be very brawl heavy. That can work here. So first point will be very good for them. But once we get to the second point of Hollywood, that's where we're going to need to see some flexibility here. I definitely think, I 100% agree with you. I love, like, there's that kind of preset meta when it comes to that night market. And like you had said, the the May that came into counter, you're forced to kind of drop in that one side with that teleporter. You have, you are, you are like in midair, your brain's looking down at that spot. I go, I'm here, the site, it's right here, the capture point. And then immediately you hear just May speak some gibberish that I don't understand because <laughs> I don't speak that language. And then immediately drops in and you go, oh no, I'm dead, <laughs> right? Like you, there's nothing, yeah, you have yeah. to get out as fast as possible. There's not a, like maybe an immortality film, but a May, like two right clicks and she'll destroy that immediately, right? And she's completely immune to her own freeze, so... You know, things like that really mess with the meta, but I tell you what won't mess with meta, Meta Pro Gaming. I mean, it's in their name, but they're a full-service esport management, developmental, and consulting company. They provide esport coaching, college esport management, and arena design and equipment. And if you want more information about them, go to metaprogaming.gg to learn more. But, you know, back to the word about the meta, what do you think we're going to see here in terms of meta for Hollywood? I've already seen this once today, and I've seen a lot of Soldiers and McCree's. What's your take? Well, Soldiers and McCree, I mean, you know, it's the... A lot of people say this about Hitscan. Hitscan, you know, is just a, such kind of a bread and butter uh, hero in Overwatch because, you know, you don't really have to try as hard to get a lot of value. Uh, whereas, you know, other like more mobility based heroes, they just have such a high skill skill ceiling. And then the level of execution that you need to get that value uh, is just uh, so much higher. So, you know, I think the sight lines on this map definitely lend itself to hit scan, especially Widow on second point. You've got the sight lines definitely on first point as well, but I think we'll see more of that play, especially on second point uh, once we get there. 
I do see the Reaper pick from Frosty. That's interesting. So probably going to maybe see some, you know, covert kind of shadow stepping, you know, maybe sneaking into the back line. Um, or maybe just, you know, playing it up with a team. You see him kind of sneaking up here to the right side, maybe going to pressure. And I like that they're hiding here. You, you can see Umbla Loomba, Frosty, Fenrir, Wild. Everyone's kind of hiding up this stairwell around the first corner. So are they going to get surprised here? Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no come through it's gonna be the charge that goes the other way emf will find the first but oompa loompa will find a second and juicy steak she'll find one superman in return with the may will get onto finrear they have the high ground with juicy steak right now but enigma is going to try to deny but will get knocked out of the mech pretty swiftly emf with a fire charge on top of the wild enigma will eventually be able to finish off out of mech onto juicy steak but you know out of the oh. mech diva is just <laughs> as dirty as in mech diva oompa loompa will fall and that cheeky strategy we saw that we were really excited for will not matter gets completely dismantled and you know they're not i don't even think they're going to try and attack this at this point the may wall is going to deny they may be able to snap on with the lucio but i don't think it's going to be enough because this firefight is going to end almost as quickly as this started with the fact that moses has already dropped frosty out and you know it's it's kind of sad to see this crumble so quickly because like we said this is the composition and map that they need to shine through and now that they've completely thrown away uh, the first point that speaks to their strengths now they're forced to contend with the you know more open second point with lots of points of high ground uh, one in which mobility really is key and we see enigma on the diva they're going to be able to control high ground far more effectively we see the switch from frosty on to hanzo though so you know also with the mindfulness of wanting to control the high ground wanting to get those angles we see the push on a high ground. The shatter does come in, but is there a follow-up? No, unfortunately, oh still no goodness. follow-up. And still firmly established onto the high ground is Santa Cruz. The fight right there was astronomical. The, the shatter connected with basically everybody, saved entirely by the fact that the immortality field was there to keep them alive. There's going to be a high noon now here by Ionic, but he's kind of being forced out of the situation, especially with the fact that EMF shield is looking worse for wear. It's going to remove the shield now of Oompa Loompa, but the secondary high noon will connect back onto Ionic. That's Juicy Snake. She finds a successful kill, but it's returned by two. Juicy Snake connected with another now into Lewis, and it's going to be a fight now as the frontliner still alive, facing off tit for tat. Enigma remove half of that now, Ecal will fall to the Hammond, and they're going to keep the Immortality Field behind. You've left the Baptiste, and the the, the, the actual ult will come through as well. Juicy Steak from behind is still able to connect with one, but it's going to be EMF who turns oh. around and shatters the solo target. Why? You have so much to do with that, and you find Juicy Steak to be that much of a nuisance that you feel it's necessary to shatter that. I, you know what? Take it. Take it all the way to the bank. And you love to see an EMF popping off thanks to just the incredible support from Moises here. Just you see the damage amp fire strike get one in that fight, but also just the synergy they have. They're just controlling this car. It has not stopped ever since it has been unlocked here. And already now on third point, you know, we're going to need to see something from UC Davis here. Like we're going to need to see that streaks of brilliance that we saw on control center. Oh my goodness, Graviton will go off into Hanzo ult to follow through. The Immortality Field saves the life, but not long enough. Frosty connects with two, and that Oompa Loompa will connect two as well. It's just going to be the only kill dropping for their side. It's going to be Superman, who's just doomed inside of his own eyes. Frosty will punch them out and knock them <laughs> one hit KO to finish off that kill. Phenomenal attack right there. You use just a few ults, you guarantee with the Graviton and with the Hanzo, and that's all you need to finish that fight. And you still have three ults available to deny this next push, but will you be able to deny it for a whole four minutes and 15 seconds well the shatter comes out gets one can they finish ionic who gets shattered unfortunately no so you know shatter that's been expended the b comes out as well to contest the blizzard but Ubalu is stuck gets stuck by the may ice block he's charged into it and unfortunately goes down now this last fight's opened up you know the minefield goes in to control even more space and is there anything that davis can do to contest this fight it's just wild, and they're going to fall as quickly as they start. Ionic will be there to clean up the, 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 the Hammond, but it won't matter anyways. Here comes Umba switching over to the Diva, and it's it's going to be hidden as soon as it started, and it's going to be Santa Cruz coming through swiftly, ending that one off. And quite honestly, when you watched UC Davis, you know, they, they held well. That I, I think they had a good situation with, on the on the main, you know, streets phase. They, they, they 
kind of had a pretty good high ground fight that unfortunately got stalled out. They didn't contest the objective enough. And that main push around that main bin on that third phase, right? I think they, they had something going for that. The Hanzo ult combined with, combined with the Graviton. You had a lot going and you had three more ults behind it. But it all goes for naught when unfortunately your Reinhardt, your frontliner, gets stuck inside a May ult and stuck on the May who's in inside of yeah. her ice. You don't even need the <laughs> ice wall in that situation. It's just the, the May herself coming through. But, you know, phenomenal to watch. I was I was all awestruck when I watched that unfortunate happenstance there for the Ryan trying to escape. But, you know, not, not a <laughs> terrible hold. I think there was a lot to be left, you know, desired, but... You know, nonetheless, I think they can have a very valid attack here, especially when they're now... Well, actually, I don't, they struggled with the open phase before, so this could actually be difficult for them. Well, I guess we will see. You know, already we see the pick onto the Winston. So, interesting that they're avoiding the composition that worked so well for them. Oh, but also one thing I do want to mention, though, is just that one play, the grab dragons. The grab that opened up the defensive attack, really, from a Davis that show that they could at least you know contend with the push that was actually facilitated by the pick onto lewis who was beating so canceling the beat secured that fight so without that pick that would have yeah it could have easily swung the other direction i think that's valid we do see kind of a, another cheeky positioning this one not really that far forward this one around the bend and they're gonna find two frags based off of it the more time they feel will drop and it's just gonna be enigma continuing to push forward and swing you've lost emf but you know, you're still getting a lot of positive frags. Superman will deal a lot of damage and actually finish off Frosty, so that Tracer is out for the count. And now they're going to take a page out of their opposition's book. You see Enigma just crouching and holding out inside that stairwell. We're going to see that charge come through, but the question is, will they be able to heal him back in time? He's severely out of position. He's going to wait to the last second to charge from behind. He hits the wall, Enigma! What are you doing in this situation? The fight's on the other end, and Enigma, who's stuck in the immortality field, will be saved, shockingly enough. But wow. it's going to be Ionic who finds Ekel the healing from the Santa Cruz side is just devastating to watch. You know, Enigma had absolutely no right to live there. He, he not at all. He was dead to rights, <laughs> but unfortunately, Davis not able to capitalize on that failed pin, uh, and to, for whatever reason, are able to sustain the fight and turn it once again. So, uh, I think we're going to need to see more of a follow-up from UC Davis. You know, they have the ability. We've seen them do this before. Oh, uh, but then the high noon takes two, and then just these follow-up picks are forcing Davis to retreat back to spawn. They're just getting bullied here, and Enigma with these really cheeky Rhine positions, once pushed up as far as you could possibly go. <laughs> and hey, still 0-2 for the charges, finally gets punished, though it's what you want to see. Oh my goodness, he, finally Enigma dies in that situation. Uh, just saying, well deserved <laughs> after attempting that so many times, but the mail will go. It's gonna be Ikal who gets stunned, but they did pop the ult. Frosty will connect with the Pulse Bomb, but it's gonna be a trade. Ionic does get the stun and kill afterward. Juicy Stank following through onto the DPS kill of Frosty, and it's looking like UC Davis will actually manage to take the point, but you see Enigma's back, and like his name is, he is an Enigma. The question is, how will he come through with that Shatter? He'll come through and try to go hard. He doesn't manage to connect, however, so it's a bit of a wasted ult, but they need to drop on swiftly or they'll need to take a step back. They already have the Hammond on point. That's EMF, and here's the drop, the beat there by Lewis. The Graviton, however, they're going to use the Maywall to deny to try to deny it, but all it does is bring the shield of Enigma away from your team, and it's going to be the, the, the Matrix from up above. Can the Baptiste and Moses actually get enough off? They will actually manage to fight oh off my, UC Davis. Picks. What is going on, Superman? No, your name is not a lie in this situation. Is Superman just incredibly well-placed icicles with the May? It, it's you don't expect this level of just sniping from a May generally, but wow, so incredibly well-placed, lighting up the kill feed time and time again, and Ionic getting his follow-up picks. Really, I did not expect that fight to go back into Santa Cruz's favor, but they were able to contest, and you I think we not. just see this kind of split <laughs> attention. Oh okay, no, we're about, to get, we're about to get C9. We're about to get C9. <laughs> No! <laughs> Santa Cruz, you cannot come out swinging that aggressively in every one of your engagements here on the defense just to give it up because you overextend and go for the back line. Finner is just saying worth. He's <laughs> they're, they're, they're already laughing, dude. They're saying Charlie Niner, Z9, they know. Is they come into that back line, but you know, nonetheless, they're still in the back line with Enigma getting kills. <laughs> I mean, hey, they've got the self-awareness, they're laughing at themselves, so you know. They know what's happening. This is uh, quite a messy map.
to be certain. I, it is just uh, so many things that have really just blown away my expectations, for better or for worse here. But hey, we're at the second point. The cart is moving along here, and we see the high ground positioning take here from Santa Cruz. You know, pushing the Nano Winston onto the high ground, but then the Blizzard to contest it. Oh, and the double kill from the high noon yet again from ionic but uh, these really effective high noons uh which you know usually don't see as much high noon considered you know a pretty you know, low priority ultimate not one that's you know as integral to winning team fights as you know let's say blizzard or even a you know, grav but wow incredibly well placed what what can we say and still <laughs> firmly established onto the high ground here we're seeing such level of high ground play by by the Santa Cruz side. A shadow will come down as Enigma drops, and he'll connect onto Fuel, and they're going to secure the kill onto Finrear. Charge will go off. He'll just launch himself in the air because of Ecal's ultimate, and the Graviton will not oh, wow. connect with any, so a wasted ult there by Oompa Loompa as they're not able to find success. That's going to be Wild Ting dropping the beat again. I'm not sure why, but the fight is pretty favorably going in UC Davis's side. But like I was saying, Santa Cruz, they chose the high ground again. We saw that on their own attack where they completely swept through the high ground. We're seeing them do it again on defense, but like we said, that double May that came through to deny that. We're seeing a phenomenal fight there by UC Davis. Two wasted ults, I would say, in my opinion, of the, the mm -hmm. beat dropping in the in the Graviton. But they still win the fight pretty handily, and there's no ults available for the Santa Cruz side besides now the Matrix that can help you in this next game. Oh, and now drop the beat, but there's not very much to help you besides your healer ultimates. Well, you can definitely see the beats probably going to swing. And they went dropping incredibly low, though. Immortality definitely saving him here. He's oh, stuck in the high ground right now. Frosty. Completely trapped. The fight will continue to engage. The maze now finally up because of the elevator, but Enigma is going to have to work their way up. Ionic connects onto Ecal, and the charge from Enigma will once again not connect. He is three for three, three strikes. You're out. Get out of here, Enigma. <laughs> we, I think you need a little bit more training on the field. I'll tell you what, though. He will connect with Juicy Snake, and she will fall on the McCree. And a charge! Finally, oh. Enigma gets the charge here on Finrear. That's the auto out for the count, and it's going to be it's gonna be Lucio on Lucio. Violence Lewis will win that one out, and Enigma will finish off Oompa Loompa. 25 Five seconds left for the UC Davis side to come back. Yeah, 25 seconds, but even by the numbers, we see nearly every ult is online here for Santa Cruz, and with, you know, a handful of yourselves already, if they let their ults, ults fly first, you know, Santa Cruz is just going to secure this pick. Uh, but, you know, Frosty definitely going to sneak onto the payload here to contest uh, Initiate Overtime. Full, five full ults available. Maybe they can C9. Card. Are we going to see a C9 oh, here? Oh, no. We better not oh. see this from Frosty. No, they don't know. They don't know. They still don't know. Lewis will finally draw. Enigma does get a charge. And a shadow turn does not connect. The Gravitons on the opposite side. Ionic will hit. Two high noons in the same one. And it's going to be completely swept by Ionic and Moses. The last player standing is going to be the Lucio. Just taking his time in the okay. back one. And it's going to be <laughs> Santa Cruz winning that one out. Oh, my goodness. We just about saw two full C9s. We almost did. Same hey. round. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That'll go to show no one C9 Santa Cruz twice in one and map. gets away with it. <laughs> <laughs> C9 me once, shame on me. C9 me twice. <laughs> <laughs> we win map two, and that's definitely what happened. This is the final play. We do see that high noon that connected. Phenomenal turn to get that. Moses had dropped two in the process as well. A phenomenal. Just a phenomenal, you know, last fight engagement that came down there. And we did see... You know, UC Davis, they won one engagement on that last point. They, they kept, you know, tit for tat, but it was the return frags and the ability to keep even their tanks alive who were getting booped off the high ground to stay alive when you've lost that front line. Uh, very phenomenal work. I think the, the healers for Santa Cruz were by far the MVPs when it came to that street stage. In, in terms of the first stage, only MVP when Enigma was doing his cheeky little things. Like the one time where he was dead to rights <laughs> on staircase, should have been dead. That was a miracle in a, in a making, but... You know, nonetheless, I think we are going to take a five minute break between map, you know, two and three, but we will be right back real shortly. My name is Infinosis, joined here by Stacked, and this has been UC Davis versus UC Santa Cruz. Stay tuned. Five minute break for the next map. Welcome back, everybody. My name is Infernosis, and this is NECC Esports. I'm, I'm, you know, here in this booth, I guess we'll call it here, and I'm joined here by Stacked. How are you doing today, Stacked? Uh, doing pretty well, you know. We were just uh, chatting up about what we've seen here in this match. We have UC Davis versus Santa Cruz. Just finished on Hollywood, which was a surprising and messy match. So many unconventional things happening. Uh, it's going to be very fun to look back on this VOD. But 
you know, it's, we can put that out of our minds and go forward to what we know will be our third map, Rialto here. Oh, I'm excited for Rialto. I'm just saying it. Last match, I got to cast that one. Mm, I saw Widowmakers, and I saw Widowmaker's success. It wasn't just a Widowmaker <laughs> brought out. I saw Widowmaker's success, and success at a level that was devastating to watch. And as a Widowman, like, you, like, part of me is like, man, I love this. You know, this is great to watch and behold. But the other part of me is going, oh, oh it's, just, it's just a massacre yeah. <laughs> that's coming through. And you're, like, disgusted to see it come through. I acted it multiple times to Dr. Pimple Popper videos, where you're both like, you can't stop <laughs> watching, but you're like, this is awful. Like, why am I... Why am I watching this at 4 a.m. when I can't get any sleep? But, you know, nonetheless, I'm really excited. Right. Rialto's a very, uh, the, the first corner is very tight. Uh, once you get past that little stage, you do have that open area. And we had talked about UC Davis, or you had spoken about during the break. It was a little disorderly in terms of grouping for their, for their you know, play style. And, and that could be a huge detriment for this payload push on Rialto. And, you know, I think we've not seen so much in terms of a focus on long range hit scan, but definitely something that has great effect, especially in Rialto. There's so many sight lines throughout this entire map. And so historically it has great effectiveness. And of course you can, can take like an aerial game. I think we, we've seen an echo here and there can have great effectiveness. There's so much natural kind of buildings and things that you can use in the architecture uh, to kind of just you know, kite and uh, block sight lines. I am interested to see what compositions we go into here. Uh, but really, I think once again, we can see the brawl comp work here. And once again, that seemed to be the best situation for Davis, something that really let their strengths show through. And if we can see the same situation that we saw before in control points on Li Jiang, I think you know, hopefully they can get their stride back into this set and get a win on the board here. I definitely think it's uh, it's going to be something to take into account. And one thing that we have noticed a lot of in terms of the like every single map we've seen so far, it's been a huge presence on McCree's. We are seeing Juicy Snake. She's going to bring out the Widow. And if I remember correctly, last time we had seen Juicy Snake bring out the Widow, it was phenomenal to behold. Juicy Snake went off on Widow, but unfortunately, they're going to actually smudge it out. Frosty's going to go back onto the Reaper. It's going to be Juicy Snake onto the McCree now. And like I said, McCree's someone we've seen a whole lot of today, especially here on Rialto. You'd seen a lot of it be going around and, and having that potential through, but I definitely think it's something to keep an eye on for now as we're going to see a soldier and now a doom fist superman's going to bring out all these strange dps choices first a may and now the doom fist so that's going to be a huge deficit in the back line especially when you're rocking a winston to follow through with it and you see this composition uh, from santa cruz just really interesting so you know you've got the hog it's going to take these flanks as well as the doom as well as the winston so there's going to be a lot of different angles of attack here the Brig is basically having to push Cart here and getting backed up by the Zen. Already we see Superman diving in, taking out Stake. Gets refragged here, you know, picked by Wild, but still, the utility is there. You know, you've got the respawn advantage. Oh, but Fenrir is able to take out Enigma here, so, you know, they're holding this first corner, and it's, it's nice to not let the Cart push past this first choke here. Uh, because if they can hold themselves up here, establish themselves defensively, it's going to be very hard to push into the Rhine Zarya with this composition. And already see, you know, some changes. We see the Wrecking Ball instead of the Hog. And this joint dive now. Superman oh. once again picking the back, like, picking the DPS. I like that. Chasing down Wild. He gets that revenge from the pick before. Wow, Superman just showing off time and time again, you know. You thought they were playing kind of slow with the May. Well, here's the Doom Fist. How about that? I mean, th th you have to switch off the Widow. And once again, Widow's going to get taken out again. And I, I love to see Widow. You know, I always rave about Widows, but this isn't it. You're, you're getting devastated now by both the Hammond, the Winston, and the, and the Doom Fist. It's just not working out. Oompa Loompa will find a frag. That's all I have to say about that. Juicy Stack, however, she'll find a second. The switch to McCree and the respawn timing will put them in a good spot to regroup. But, you know, nonetheless, it's going to be another very swift engagement now by Enigma coming over the top line, showing that they can play a Hammond and a Reinhardt. But unfortunately, the Reinhardt will be the thorn in the side for him. Oompa Loompa will charge and it will be Frosty to finish this one off. So one player down now for the Santa Cruz side to make their way into this next engagement. 
And yeah, I mean, you're gonna get run over, basically, if you're playing the Brawl, and you've got so much dive to contend with, your, your team's getting split up, and, you know, unless you're actually playing with the Ryan, who can actually mitigate any of the damage, uh, Doom's gonna keep diving the squishy targets, forcing the cooldowns, and also the Wrecking Ball just pressuring the backline. Juice Stick does get the chase down, though, so that's an incredibly good pick, though, but they need to follow up here, and unfortunately, once again, we see the split, so Umla Luma is left by themselves to contend with the cart, and just this split attack is just completely cleaving through any defenses that Davis had before. It's Stan Santa Cruz is just, they're, they're just going through. I mean, we do finally see, finally Superman on the Doomfist will get taken out after pushing all the way forward onto the top of Wild, trying to finish it off the entire time. Well, fortunately, you know, be able to get, you know, him killed in the process, but it, it's just a small little checkered plus and a, a wide string of exits, and it's unfortunately going to continue in that rain. They're going to only leave one, maybe even two, on the actual payload. It's going to be a transcendence that comes through from the UC Davis side, and they also had UC Mortality, but they must have felt very threatened in that engagement to have to use both of those in this fight, but it will continue Matrix drops, and they have nobody there to actually fight with, so a bit of a wasted one there by Baptiste from Wild, but EMF switched over now. They're going to play the Arisa, and it's going to allow them to kind of hold on to this in the in the situation they get onto because you can't be pushed off as the Arisa flank from behind now. Umbu will get a pull onto Levi, but it doesn't seem to matter. Finrare connecting on a Superman, denying that backward dive, and the transcendence will come through. Will it be enough to maintain the security of your of your front line, or is it going to be inevitably a backward angle? Graviton comes through, and so does the High Noon, and this one only takes out one, but the fight and continues to ensue, and it's going to be a hard-fought one as Enigma is discorded and finished off by the rush from Frosty. I think so long as they don't overextend, you know, Davis definitely has an advantage here. And I like now finally focusing on the Doom, getting punished time and time again. Who knows if we're going to see a switch from Superman, but, you know, still getting a lot of value. We saw Superman pressure the backline supports, enforce the trance, which even if you don't get a pick, that's still a lot of value, getting such a high value ultimate uh, offline. When you take a look at the engagement up top, they're holding in that backside angle. You'll see a lot of teams who will actually go up top, and, you know, apparently Enigma isn't one of those. Enigma is going to go around the backside. You see Ionic with a Soul Drill will connect to the back line of the opposition. Both healers down, and now Ecal as well. Enigma will clean off too, and that's going to be a huge push. Frosty is going to get decimated by Enigma and the Zarya combo, and it's going to be that back line pushed by Superman to force the opposition even further back, and some of them even back into the respawn in their spawn. And something that I loved about that attack was just incredibly well-timed. You saw Enigma go up and over the buildings and slam into the back line with the minefield. And it was incredibly well-timed with the like frontal, the main push from the rest of the team. Like, what an incredibly coordinated attack there. Superman with the two picks on the meteor strike and still pressuring Umbla Loomba here at spawn. Can't, it's, it's just getting bullied. Can't even push on to the point uh, to touch and contest. Wow, uh, incredibly well fought last point there, but wow, such a well executed play there. It, great all around uh, no real notes there but we are going to need to see just a quicker adaptation like i was saying just the adaptation the flexibility that you want to see from davis to contend with the pushes and attacks from santa cruz so we see the variability they have and they were kind of slow on the uptake to switch off of the brawl to contend with this insane dive that we saw executed so well and it was at last point that we switched off of the rhine onto the hog to you know deal with the wrecking ball deal with the doom uh, but still, it, it was not enough to then pivot onto the Arisa change. And then so you had to deal with the dive as well as the just ongoing, the brutal attack onto, you know, pushing the payload. It was just so much back and forth. But we saw the quicker repositioning, the quicker adaptation still from Santa Cruz here. Let's take a look at the UC Davis like lineup that they're currently rocking. We aren't going to see the Sigma come through, which is something we have not seen at all today. And that's kind of shocking. Sigma's a, a hero that has a lot of viability. Being able to move and move that shield around all the time, being able to change it around. We're going to see them bring out the Torbjorn. and they're definitely going to plop that on the payload and really bring that one around. But they, they initially had the double sniper combination. They had the Hanzo and Widowmaker, and now they're just going to bring the Torbjorn and Widowmaker. But it's going to be the Mercy Far combo, the Far Mercy over the top. It's Ionic, and of course, it's going to be Moses that are just going to be that presence. But oh. I, as I say that, <laughs> Ionic will take a drink in the dip, and they 
Snow gonna fall that one there. Finver will find success and so will Frosty. That Immortality Field will have found success in the back line and that dive from those two will be utterly failed. It's gonna be a continued push. Finver finding EMF and it's gonna be there to push out the back line. Enigma barely able to escape with his life and they might actually continue to push this one. They're pushing it aggressively with an Orisa. She's gonna mount that forward charge, galloping in the direction of the opposition and that is a scary gallop indeed. Lewis will fall to that and it's gonna be the high ground taken now by the Sigma and by the Baptiste of the opposition. And I like this, you know, the double shield is working incredibly well right now, so we're going to need to see the, you know, the quick changes here uh, from Santa Cruz, but this is going to be an incredibly just quick take on the first point, unless they can dive on here. The pick from Juicy Stake onto Enigma, though, stops what I think will be this last contest here. But Losing Superman, once again, with incredible target focus. You, you said you think that pick on the Zarya was going to be enough. It's not. Superman coming through with two of their own, and it's going to be EMF as well following suit. We're going to see a cheeky position. We saw Enigma before doing this on Reinhardt, and now we're going to see it being done by EMF and by Superman. They're going to hold up that high position just on the edge. They're going to bait their team down below. They're going to keep them stuck in that situation. Kind of, you know, be that be that thorn. They're like, hey, you look at this situation. We can jump on this. We can engage. But little did you know, you've got the double dive of the Doomfist and the Winston behind. Doomfist has picked his target. It's Vin Rear. He's not going to be the man of the hour in this one. That's going to be a very swift kill from him, and they're going to continue to stay back there. Enigma now hanging out with the Zarya. Winston still up on the high ground, and if you take a look, UC Davis is going to go all the way around the back side. They're going to push from the back side of the back side of Santa Cruz. And yeah, once again, just the, these incredibly executed dives. Superman getting target after target. You know, it's such an effective Doomfist, and I'm not sure if Davis knows what to do here. But, you know, once again, as I'd spoken before, uh, I don't know why I'm still surprised. So many times Santa Cruz has been able to pull victory out of the Jaws of Defeat, you know, swaying just fight after fight back into their favor, when I think it's decidedly so in uh, Davis's. So I, I think they're not to be undone by seemingly difficult situations and just rushing onto point getting targets down and the chase down from superman time and time again is just something to behold it really well executed plays here i mean we do see oh. that the <laughs> widowmaker all does go off and is immediately denied by emf of the winston I mean, switch off the winner at this point. I hate to say that. I always, I always hate to say that, but you need more impactful DPS. The Torbjorn, which has found a little success, will not find any more as they also get taken on the fight, but the ult will be available, which will allow them to go through the streets phase a little bit easier in terms of denial. Gravitic Flux does go off, and it's not going to be enough. Lewis, who gets underneath the balcony edge, will deny most of that. And it's going to be Superman who denies the opposition in return. Two kills dropped immediately back to back, and Lewis will show healers can get it done too. That's for... That's the kill on Ecal. Juicy Steak, <laughs> she'll find one with the Widow, but immediately get refracted by a Zenyatta. And I once again rest my case. I may love Widow, but it's not the play in this situation because they're brawling you outside your own spawn. And did you see how much that Davis had to expend to even try to secure the pick onto Lewis and still were not able to? They expended so much, the Transcendence, and then the Gravitic Flux, and then still... The transcendence from the side of Santa Cruz was enough to just uh, mitigate that. It's just incredible, just the amount of answers they have to anything that's getting thrown at them. Oh my goodness, that Graviton Surge goes off. Ecal barely surviving it, and they're actually still very low as well. But it looks like we're actually going to see UC Davis get what? a couple kills off. Ionix Soldier out will deny one, and it's going to be EMF who gets the second one in that fight. But it is going to be a full stage push now for the Torbjorn. That's the drop now. Ionic is going to try and fight this one off, but it's not going to matter. Frosty will find one on Ionic and one on the EMF. Doofus jumping into the back lane. That's Superman. He is going to get Discord orbed and taken out quite swiftly. The Roadhog from the side here is going to try and get that little bit of extra help, but it's going to be another kill that just goes in that direction. The Torbjorn ult has found massive success here on side this point. No way to deny it, and they're going to buy themselves another two and a half minutes of extra time. And you know, it's once again, they're still in this. There's still some fire left in these embers. You know, they're not snuffed out yet, so I like this. You're seeing the utility from the Molten Core securing that point, so uh, finally seeing the DPS kind of make a, a really nice impact in a fight you'd like to see that but we're still need to go to see answers for the doom fist once again superman just diving deep in the back line and disrupting you know pulling the attention away from bat from widow it's just now you've got no focus on point frosty having to deal with pushing card on their own here oh the 
the fight does continue onward. Moses will find one, but it's Superman who solo ults the back line of Juicy Steak. She's going to fall, and Ionic will make make sure Wild does as well. Well, you do have UC Davis, who had their front line already on the payload and keeping to push it. You have three of your, half your team, sitting all the way back, completely out of the way, and completely separated from your actual defensive position. And it's going to be a clean, clean sweep when it comes to that dive push. And you take a look at the aggressive position Ecal is taking, and he's going to go all the way through and possibly from behind to do the same thing that just happened to you, but you don't have the same level of dive damage. Umba will try and trap the Enigma inside of the corner. They're just going to leave him. They know. Oh, never mind. They're not. Wild will finish the kill. They should have just left it. That's time bought in your backline where you don't have to worry about that one individual person, especially because you can out heal a diva. But still, it's Fenrir just getting bullied in the spawn, getting just spawn camped by the Dio, by the Doom. And once again, you know that Superman's mission here is to keep putting pressure on the Zen. Fine does continue to engage. It's going to be Juicy Snake. She finds two and shuts down Ionic, who was inside of the Soldier 76 ult. This is a very difficult phase where I initially thought they weren't going to find success because of their refusal to switch off the Widow. Obviously, the right decision, like I had spoken about. Juicy Snake, she has gone off in this one. And then they're going to drop and hold onto the, the actual mine off in the point. And it's going to be a trade mine as well by Ecal. So they're going to drop two minefields in the area. EMF's going to try and survive as well, but it's going to be even more damage from Juicy Snake. Uh, can we can we get a, can we get a call here by can we get a call here by like can we see that I want to see just how much Juicy Snake's popping off because this is this is disgusting. Where's Juicy yeah, Snake? I think, I need to watch this. Like you've mentioned, you know you should have switched. I'm glad they finally did because immediate value has been had from switching onto the Cree. Yeah, you, know, you see these team fights now solidly going in Davis's favor. You know you're gonna have the flashbang to contend with the dive. But here, initiating with the slam here. That shield's gonna go down, so Superman's, yeah, pushing into such a difficult situation. You have the rally, so it's gonna be a lot of armor, a lot of healing. Engagement is going down. That's going to be Transcendence for Moses to go, but Finger is going to trade it back in return as well. Second Transcendence will give them the advantage for a little bit longer than before, and the drop will come through. That's a rally now coming below us, but they will die immediately afterwards. Juicy Steak will finish that one off. She has found amazing success, and she's going to continue to do so with a high... Hey, we'll try to go for the Doofist, or sorry, <laughs> but it does not matter. Doofist is now inside of the actual old. <laughs> it's Juicy Steak just running around trying to stay alive, but it looks like Superman, who dropped down in an area, will be eventually removed by Juicy Steak. They have set themselves up in a very strong hold here for the, San for the Santa Davis side, but it, I, for the Santa Cruz side, I'm sorry. But right now, UC Davis has still has 30 seconds and time to re-push. You may have lost e -Cal, but you have time to let that Hammond come back and give yourself another chance for this fight. Yeah, but this Diva Bomb is going to have so much area denial potential, especially because they're going to have to push up the just so much open space. Uh, and also, the Visor, you know, it might get some value here, but still. Supercharger is initiated, and that might be the damage they need here. But like I said, the Diva Bomb oh, gets Juicy oh, Steak in the back. Juicy Steak dying here is exactly the opposite of what you needed. Ionic will get taken out by Ecal, but not before he manages to drop Finver. Superman with a double kill now, taking both Wild and Ecal out, and Moses will be another cleanup. Not the last, as it's going to be Ecal with the minefield to finish off the last kill, but it's just, like I had said earlier, one plus in a field of mini Xs, and it's going to ultimately lead to a Santa Cruz win. The UC Santa Cruz side is the battle of the UCs, and uh, unfortunately for UC Davis, one Santa Cruz will win that one out. And... <sighs> Switching too late. I think that's what it comes down to. You didn't. You said Overwatch is a game of adapting, of of, of taking into stances and reacting according to the situation. And UC Davis one didn't change their heroes in time. Juicy Snake was obviously the right choice to get under the McCree. She did phenomenal. Had an amazing job in the last pushes. That streets phase. She thrashed that last thing. She did just the same thing, just not enough, and unfortunately died at the last second of that fight. Why were we on the Torbjorn for so long? Where where did that come from? <laughs> I ran the widow for so long. And I know it's weird for right. me to be the to say that, but nonetheless. It's not yeah, what you're looking uh, for. No, definitely. And I think it's something we touched upon that throughout the uh, entire set here. That yeah, it's just a game of adaptation. And the team that was quicker on the uptake was definitely Santa Cruz here. Davis was just uh, not as adaptable. And I think that really came back to bite them, as we saw, you know, time and time again. I think that's something you definitely have to take into account, but I think we will get a interview underway fairly soon. No interview? No interview. So we're not going to have an interview in this stage. So no interview, unfortunately. 
UC Santa Cruz and then not coming through for the interview, but uh, still a phenomenal game to come through. A, a, you know, a pretty clear-cut winner in that decision, and it, it's a very phenomenal. We had kind of anticipated the Santa Cruz side to win because they had, you know, like you had said, they beat the winners of last year's, you know, entire thing. So it's it's phenomenal to see that UC Davis one had competitive, you know, spirit, and they they fought through that. They had a very good round one on map one. They actually won that one out, forcing it into a 2-1 scoreline. And they had some good fights, and we definitely see some standout players coming from the UC Davis side. And that's something to keep an eye on for. The more universities and, you know, the more these colleges build up and have these things set in stone, the more likely they are to have a, a stand to show his team, a standoffish team, continuing and going forward and say more seasons or more leagues and more environments. So, but I think if I am correct here, prediction, that's all we have for you today. Yep, that's all we have for you today. My name has been Infernosis, joined here by Stack. Thank you very much, Stack, for joining me. Thank you very much to everyone here working at the NECC staff and everyone that's working behind the production scene. We're moderating the chat, everything in between. And we will see you guys in the next broadcast tomorrow.